Anthony Fauci is finally appearing before a House subcommittee and has admitted that many of the regulations during the pandemic just sort of appeared. Well, I'll tell you what sort of disappeared. Your child's education, your small business, your human rights. Will this subcommittee get to the truth? <laughs> Hello there, you Awakening Wonders. Thanks for joining us on our voyage to truth and freedom together. A rigorous inquiry. Hopefully, the House subcommittee that Fauci is appearing before will not lack the rigor that we apply to discerning truth. And if you want yet more truth from us, become a member of our Awakened Wonder community where you get additional videos like these exclusively and early. There's a link in the description. Join us now. So, Fauci for a long time in your community, in our community, in the spaces where people are discerning, has been far from the hero he was presented as being during the pandemic where talk show hosts did musical numbers around him, where people got t-shirts with his face and people go, oh is it okay that this guy's slightly hot, he's a sex symbol? Where the BBC did fawning interviews as if they were talking to Tom Jones circa 1960 or Harry Styles right now. Do you work out all the time? Yeah. Andy Fauci, it seems, is a figure that warrants a House subcommittee inquiry, and one is underway. Now, it may be taking place behind closed doors, presumably to control the information and ensure that necessary and vital questions, the kind of questions that you, for example, might put to Anthony Fauci, remain unasked. But already it's been revealed that significant things, such as social distancing measures, just sort of appeared. Remember that? Follow the science. Well, here's one bit of science that just sort of appeared, you know, the way that the universe just sort of appeared. Six feet social distancing suggestion, for example, meaningless. Mask, basically meaningless. And indeed, there may yet be claims about lockdown. I know you guys are already asking the questions. Let me know in the comments below if your questions have been answered. And yes, you guessed it, medications that were suggested during that period that may not even warrant the use of the word vaccine. So, Anthony Fauci may now be facing questions about the lockdown period and pandemic measures, but just a couple of years ago, he was very confident about the efficacy of, say, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Let's refresh our memories by watching Anthony Fauci waxing lyrical about Johnson & Johnson and numerous other products that have since become somewhat questionable. I would definitely take the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. This is a vaccine that works and it only requires one dose. Already, he's lied twice. Once for every Johnson. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine uses a particular what we call vaccine platform. That's a commercial. Isn't it odd that you're saying the brand names? Woo, Johnson and also Johnson or Pfizer. These are not tribes. These are not things you should affiliate yourself. It's ridiculous that this whole matter became politicized in the first place. Even our ire, objection, outrage and resistance is a response to the fact that the whole situation was emotional you have to take it. You should be shamed if you don't take it. This is disgusting that you wouldn't take it. You shouldn't get hospital treatment. Hold on a minute. Let's just have a look at some clinical trial data. Let's see how effective it is. Let's see whether or not it stops transmission. Let's see if it's more appropriate that older people take it or vulnerable or at-risk people. Let's see if it has an impact on coronary conditions and heart conditions. Let's find out if it even has influences as yet not determined around life expectancy, unexpected deaths. It should never have been treated in the way it was, as if it was somehow a cross between the best thing since sliced bread and Justin Bieber. It was at best some medicine. And you inject it into the body, the body sees that protein, makes it a good immune response against the entire virus. You know what, I resent this whole pseudo-scientific tone now of like, like, I'm here to explain to you, it's kind of like it does this and it does that, as if it's like, oh, that's what you're doing, is it? You're the person that's simplifying this for us, translating it for us, because it's so complex that we would never be able to discern what mRNA vaccines do and spike proteins and migrating from the site and myocarditis and pericarditis, because guess what? Now we're all experts, because we've had to become experts, because turns out we weren't being told the whole truth. The whole patronizing, the didactic, paternal, patriarchal, talk down tone was a problem from the beginning. Some people saw it in the first place. Let me know if you're one of the people that noticed straight away. Remember, subscribe, comment, keep this content well distributed. The tone of it was wrong in the first place and it turns out much of the information was also incorrect. Well, it's not. Tested in the United States. Keep testing. It's 72% effective in preventing you from getting moderate to severe disease but virtually 100% protective against hospitalizations and death as proven by this trial that was done. Well, that didn't age very well, did it? 
We begin this hour with some breaking news. An advisory panel to the CDC saying people should not get the Johnson & Johnson vaccine if the Pfizer or Moderna shots are available. That panel just wrapped up a meeting on the risk of rare but potentially life-threatening blood clots linked to the J&J vaccine. I saw a meme. I'm sure you've seen it. If your blood's not clotting, it should be boiling. So when you hear now that the FDA is recommending most people not get the J&J vaccine, how does that make you feel? Like a day late and a dollar short. <laughs> you know, you feel I feel like I wish I, I really wish I knew that. Yeah, that's some information that I could have done with yesterday. The FDA is now strongly suggesting people get Pfizer or Moderna. Begging the question, was enough testing done on the J&J &J shot before it received FDA approval? And yet, if you continue to ask those kind of questions now, you're regarded as a crackpot. If you're like, well, what about the Pfizer vaccines? What about the Moderna vaccines? What about these adverse events? What about myocarditis, pericarditis, excess death? Oh, you're a conspiracy theorist. They say that the problem with independent media and independent voices. Barack Obama himself says is they muddy the war and they create doubt. But no, it's the legacy media and the establishment that create doubt. They create just enough doubt to generate compliance. What independent media does is generates hope that things can be changed. I want my hair back. Aside from that, I want, it's coming back. Um, I, want, I just want my life to be where it was. No, it never will be. She lost her hair. I mean, she looks fantastic hair. No one can argue with that now. But it seems that there should have been a little more trialing and a little less hyperbole. The FDA has issued a statement regarding Johnson & Johnson's COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, they are recommending a pause in the use of the vaccine. Could you just pause? Note how they use language the whole time. Oh, these hysterical conspiracy theorists. All we're asking you to do is pause from taking the Johnson & Johnson vaccine that we heartily, not heartily, um, uh, seriously recommended that you take a little while ago. Don't use the word heart around Johnson & Johnson. Their whole attempt to maintain a position of superiority and sort of an academic sheen, in spite of the fact that they've been wrong, they've lied, they've exaggerated, they made up rules, they took steps that seem motivated by profit rather than pragmatism, and yet they still like to point the finger and damn those of us that have been inquiring as the problem. Now they are describing this as an abundance of caution. And then... The Johnson & Johnson shot is no longer available. The CDC said stock expired on May 7th, but experts say the demand for the J&J &J vaccine was already low before the federal COVID emergency ended. Well, it's because making people's hair fall out and giving them heart attacks. I mean, you can't expect people to keep demanding this product, can you? So just look at the trajectory all the way from Anthony Fauci saying, it's fantastic, I'd recommend you take it. 66%, no, it's more like 72%. Well now, oh, it's making people's hair fall out. This is the trajectory that we will see, I believe, with many of these products. What's happening is the water is indeed being muddied, not by independent media, not by conspiracy theorists, by the establishment. They are preventing us from reaching the conclusions that are becoming increasingly obvious about this project, like, is it possible it's related to excess deaths? Is it possible that is related to heart disease? Is it possible that it shouldn't have been pushed in the way it was? Were lockdowns effective? Should social distancing even have been applied? Can we ever, ever trust you again? What's your medical advice for people who have recently received the J&J &J vaccine and may be concerned about yeah. blood clots? Is it me? Or does the future feel more insecure and uncertain? Wars, pandemics, lies, trickery. My cats keep having kittens. The last one's personal. For those who are in the United States, there is a way to secure your hard-earned nest egg. American Hartford Gold make it easy to protect your savings and retirement accounts with physical gold and silver. With one phone call, they can have physical gold and silver delivered right to your door or inside a qualifying retirement account like your IRA or 401k. American Hartford Gold is the highest rated firm in the US with an A plus rating from the BBB and thousands of satisfied clients. Right now, they will give you up to $5,000 of free silver on your first qualifying order. This offer is only for US customers. Call 866-505-8315. That's 866-505. 505-8315 or simply text BRAND to 998899. Get up to $5,000 of silver and protect your future in this crazy, crazy world with some solid precious metals literally made in stars. Well, I mean, if someone recently within days, I would tell them to just, first of all, don't get an anxiety reaction because remember, it's less than one in a million. However, having said that, pay attention. Do you have symptoms? headache, do you have shortness of breath, chest discomfort, do you have anything that 
resembles a neurological syndrome. Let me just check. Do I have a neurological syndrome? Where's all the confidence gone? Doing an advert for him last week. Now he's like, oh yeah, it should probably check if you've got a neurological syndrome. Notice how they mitigate, dilute, and obfuscate using like it's one in a million. I don't think it looks like one in a million anymore, does it? Not from 2024's perspective. And obviously if you have something as serious as a seizure. <laughs> but why wait for a seizure? Just check if you've got a neurological syndrome. Uh-oh, it's beginning to feel a lot like syndrome. That's pretty clear. But the manifestations of this are that headache is the very common component of it because the sinus thromboses that they have. Don't try and get back on track. No, what that'll be is the old uh, sinus from, you told me to take it. Is the draining of the blood in the brain and it will cause enough symptomatology to make you notice it. Yeah, yeah. symptomatology. In microcosm, you see the whole journey from the confident, easy, avuncular, hey, take this medicine, I would, all the way to seizure. You better get yourself to the hospital. Seizure in court <laughs> when we sue Johnson & Johnson. We'll see more and more of this activity, although it will be diluted and it will be sort of a, a mosaic of lies and deception placed beneath the bubbling cauldron of truth that many more of us are finding it impossible to ignore. Just tell people to just watch out for not feeling very well. That's what the whole COVID campaign should have been in the first place. Not running up and down the street, wearing masks, musical numbers, people clapped. I mean, the whole thing's been hysterical, hasn't it? So now, having travelled from Take Johnson & Johnson to, oh, sorry about your seizure, there's finally a House subcommittee on the subject. It's behind closed doors. I wonder why that is. But let's see what information has already leaked out from under the door. A bit like what definitely didn't happen at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Why don't you guys keep those windows shut? Dr. Anthony Fauci confessed to lawmakers Tuesday that guidelines to keep six feet of separation, ostensibly to limit the spread of COVID-19, just sort of appeared without scientific input. Fauci revealed to the House Select Subcommittee on the coronavirus pandemic that the six feet of part recommendation championed by him and other US public health officials was likely not based on scientific data, according to Chairman Brad Wenstrup, representative of Ohio, who is also a physician. So now we have on one hand medical measures that were enthusiastically recommended that have subsequently proven to be a lot less reliable, shall we say, and social measures that were arbitrary. You know, we always joke about when they say those old movies, if there's a nuclear war, get under your desk or on an aeroplane, put your head between your knees and kiss your ass goodbye. These social measures were, to a degree, a form of social control, even if it wasn't a malfeasant attempt to BF Skinner style amend our behaviour. Certainly, it was a suggestion of obedience that was either fatic, assat and empty, or just made up. I mean, by their own words, it just sort of appeared. Keep a six foot distance, keep an eight foot distance, keep a two inch distance, keep no distance at all. Take Johnson & Johnson, don't take Johnson & Johnson. Take Pfizer, don't take Pfizer. Have a lockdown, don't have a lockdown. The truth is they don't know. And if you don't know, don't pretend to come from a position of authority. Don't take a bunch of taxes. Don't fund that lab in Wuhan and say you didn't. Don't go to the CIA and tell them to repress information. Don't claim that it can't have come from Wuhan, it came from a wet market, when you've got clear suspicions that it did come from that in Institute of Virology. Don't, in short, lie. Schools nationwide remained closed well into the second year of the pandemic as a result of the social distancing guidelines, which were disputed by both research studies and other health officials. Asked about a study in Massachusetts schools that found just three feet of distance between students resulted in similar COVID case rates. Fauci said the same month the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention was very carefully reviewing the data and would likely update them. So in a way, six feet, three feet, one foot, no feet, lockdown, no lockdown. Review, where's the review. No, it seems that he's been sort of ushered off out the door before we can say, hey, a lot of that stuff turns out not to have been true. What exactly is your relationship with these pharmaceutical companies? What kind of royalties do you receive and have you historically received for them? And do you think it's possible to be objective when regulating the use of their products when you have a historic financial relationship with these organizations? Is that question going to get asked? Let me know in the chat what questions you want to see asked. A top White House advisor to two presidential administrations, Fauci's transcribed interview before the House COVID panel revealed systemic failures 
in our public health system and shed light on serious procedural concerns with our public health authority, according to Wenstrup. Those failures included foisting vaccination mandates on schools and businesses. Just take a moment to think about the personal inconveniences of those mandates upon you. Oh yeah, God, and work. And like some of you have lost your business, right? Some of you lost your job. Some of you are noticing now that your kids have suffered in ways that are irreversible and you're a good parent, you're a good family, you'll work it out, I'm sure. But what you may consider is your obedience in future. After two days of testimony and 14 hours of questioning, many things became evident. During his interview today, Dr. Fauci claimed that the policies and mandates he promoted may unfortunately increase vaccine hesitancy for years to come, Wenstrup said. I would say so. It's clear that dissenting opinions were often not considered or suppressed completely. Should a future pandemic arise, America's response must be guided by scientific facts and conclusive data. That's not something that requires research or investigation. That's obvious. That's exactly what people were saying at the time. That's not enough to go, oh, well, better luck at the next pandemic. Of course, it's going to be slightly different next time. Of course, there will be variations. Actually, if you want to draw a conclusion from what happened, they were wrong. We were right, and now they're trying to furiously backpedal out of the mess that they created. But unfortunately for us, many of the consequences were not endured by them. They're avoiding those consequences to this day. Wenstrup also said committee members remain frustrated with Dr. Fauci's inability to recollect COVID-19 information that is important for our investigation while others we have spoken to do recall the facts. Do you know I don't recall what I was doing that day? I was wearing a humorous variety of masks, like I was wearing colourful socks, like a jolly old boss. Oh look, I'm wearing a golf tie today. Representative Michael Cloud, Republican Texas, who sits on the panel, said Tuesday night that Fauci had shown an amazing ability to either forget what happened or then to find ways to shirk any sort of responsibility for the influence that was had during the two-day affair. No, I can't remember that. Actually, I do remember, and here's how I'm going to shirk responsibility. Astonishing set of abilities from Fauci. Science, forgetting, shirking. What a CV. They wash their hands of any sort of responsibility. That's one thing they were pretty consistent with. It was the hand washing, but sadly it turns out in a Pontius Pilate way rather than a hygienic way. Oh, those decisions were made by school districts. But the school districts know if you don't follow the guidance that's coming out of the federal government, you open yourselves up to lawsuits, Cloud said of Fauci and other US pandemic response officials. There's not decentralized power. They have no legal power. They could go, oh, we're going to open our school or we're going to ignore that advice. But they would have been legally exposed in the event of problems. And God, it's been a time where there's been a lot of problems, hasn't it? He says he's still not convinced there was learning loss. That's in his view. That's really open for discussion. How could there not have been? If there is no learning loss, don't bother sending your kids to school now. Abandon the school system. Stop taxpayer-funded schools, right? Because it doesn't matter whether or not children go or whether or not you can see. Does that make a difference to my ability to communicate with you right now? Would you say that that's a little easier to understand than that? Of course it is. Does it make a difference if your kids go to a building and are socialised and have access to the information? Or can they sit at home on laptop. If we're going to have a full review and a full reckoning here, let's consider the likelihood of all those outcomes. Republican staff members said the former National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, NIAID, director also admitted that America's vaccine mandates during the COVID-19 pandemic could increase vaccine hesitancy in the future, but they advised US colleges to impose vaccine mandates on their students during the pandemic. He says he appreciates that people will not trust the government, but simultaneously he says we should force them to obey. That is what tyranny tyranny and dictatorship sound like. Remember, we've been saying for a long time on this channel, don't think it's going to be all people with a load of medals on, like Sieg Heiling. It's going to be people being all friendly and wearing like masks with little logos and granddad socks and a smile and a nudge and a wink. But if you don't do exactly what you're told, you're unpersoned or you're persecuted or you're fined, you're imprisoned. Tyranny is tyranny. It doesn't matter if the person's smiling and pretending to be a lovely old uncle while they're tyrannising you. In 2021, Fauci had also said it was proven that when you make it difficult for people in their lives, they lose the ideological bullshit and they get vaccinated. Amazing. Didn't you just sense that's what it was? People were like, hold on a minute, I don't think I should be told what to do. I don't trust Pfizer, the way that Pfizer have behaved historically and the pharmaceutical industry in the United States of America, the amount of blood they've got on their hands. Well, they'll lose that ideological bullshit, principles, values, freedom, all of which is held beneath the phrase ideological bullshit by Anthony Fauci. That's what your freedom is. That's what your self-determination is to them. Ideological bullshit. When I say them, I don't just mean Fauci. I mean a bureaucratic class that provide the cartilage between the state and the corporate state. Those people believe that your freedom is just something you're like gibbering on about and that you'll shut up eventually when they introduce the appropriate measures. The COVID Select Subcommittee will hear further testimony from Fauci in a public hearing later this year. 
year. Well, let's all look forward to that. One person who should definitely be included in that public committee is, well, you, but also Rand Paul. One person who's consistently asked questions that needed to be asked was Rand Paul. Hopefully they'll include him. Here he is now posing a few questions in the mainstream media. The one thing that's consistent about Anthony Fauci is what he says in private is largely true. What he says in public is largely a lie. When asked about the masks by a fellow co-worker, Sylvia Burwell, oh, yeah. he told her the truth. He said the masks don't work because the pores are bigger Their than the virus. Their own study revealed and, that about the influenza virus. But then in public, he wears three masks. In private, he tells his colleagues, you don't really need to wear one. It's the same with immunity. It's the same with the vaccines. And it's really the same with gain of function. In private, he said, yes, we're suspicious that the virus was manipulated, looks manipulated, and we know they're doing gain of function in Wuhan, he describes it, that's in a private email. In public, to this day, he still denies that they funded any gain of research, gain of function research in Wuhan. It's all an well, entire what, what, lie. What, what, what? So it turns out all of those things were lies. Hopefully the investigation will uncover that. But what role did censorship play in preventing the truth emerging earlier? As soon as you find somebody who says to you, uh, if you contradict me, you're not contradicting a man, you're contradicting science itself. Well, that, that person you shouldn't be trusting. Uh, in a complicated situation like this, you need a very, very wide array of voices, some of whom are going to disagree with each other. Uh, I, if I were in charge of the, uh, the messaging and, uh, and decision making around it at the CDC or at the NIH or elsewhere, what I would have done is I would embrace that fact and treated the American public like adults. That's not a principle of science. That's a principle of democracy. That's the principles that we apparently live under. Freedom, individual liberty, the right to communicate, the right to dissent, the right to disobey, the right to protect yourself, to protect your own family and loved ones, the right to determine your own freedom, the pursuit of happiness. These things are literally constitutional. And what they're trying to do with trickery, skullduggery, peculiar pieces of language, eye rolling, cynicism, parentalism, is deny us the rights to our freedom, claiming to be the embodiment of science. I hope that that's one of the things that comes up in this inquiry. I hope many of the things that we've covered about censorship, freedom, the origins of that virus, the efficacy of those vaccines, their potential side effects, the side effects of lockdown, mental health, cancer, heart disease, so many questions that will likely remain unanswered. And as long as they remain unanswered, the real question is this. Are you confident that the system of government that you have in your country right now wouldn't deliver exactly the same results or seek the exact same outcome? outcomes if a similar event were to happen in the future. In short, they want your compliance, they want your obedience, they want your money, and they'll do whatever it takes to get it. They'll prevent independent or oppositional or dissenting voices emerging that help to galvanize, guide, create movements that could oppose their tyranny. So how can we ever trust them again? How can we have insular, particular, and selective House committees when what's required is a general reckoning of all of our systems of government, all of our systems of corruption, and the possibility to create new ones together? at last. And if indeed that is something that interests you, become a member of our Awakened Wonder community where we give you additional content, first looks at new content, join our movement, support us. We are determined and committed to change. More important than any of that, although that is important, let's say, please, if you can, stay free. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see more uncensored content where free speech can flourish, join our live stream. Click the link right here to watch the next video if you want to, or become a member of a growing movement. Download the Rumble app and you'll be informed every time we make a new piece of content. Stay free.